Good afternoon, everybody, and happy Mother's Day. If you did not get a flower coming in, get a flower when you head back out. We'll have them out there for you. Uh, my name is Reverend Lisa Herklotz, and I co-minister with Reverend Jim Ernston here at Unity of Charlotte, and we want to welcome you here to our Sunday service. Whether you're here in person, if you're watching us on Zoom, or maybe you're even checking us out on YouTube, we're just glad and delighted that you've joined us this Sunday. Here at Unity of Charlotte, we have a mission statement, and I would like you to join me in reading this purpose. Unity of Charlotte is the place where we nurture a deep and mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. Simply put, we are here to love, grow, and serve. Yes, indeed. Do we have anyone here for the first time? Any first time visitors? <laughs> she outed you, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, welcome, we're glad you're here. Give her a warm welcome, please. <laughs> we, uh, there are so many ways that you can reach out and find out more about Unity. Please join us in the fellowship hall afterwards. We're gonna have some snacks and coffee and it'll give you a chance to get to meet everybody and a chance for us to meet you too. You can also reach us by, through our website where you can sign in for our newsletter, you can browse our Facebook page, and you can watch past services on YouTube. And we also have more information on the bulletin board. So sometimes we have so many things going on we can't announce every one of them in the service. So always check the bulletin board to see if there's other things going on. We have lots of ongoing things too. Um, groups that meet doing A Course in Miracles, a women's group, a men's group, a reading group. So, so check all that out. All that information's on that bulletin board. If you please gently close your eyes. Allow your focus and attention to turn within into your heart center as we enter into this sacred time of prayer. Today, we hold in our hearts and prayers all the mothers, the mother figures, and the gift of divine creation itself. We express a gratitude and love for the nurturing, the patience, the acceptance, the support, and the generosity that has come to us through the presence of motherly love. And as we honor this precious gift of motherly love within us and all around us, we send it out into the world to uplift all those who are suffering in any way. Those who are experiencing personal trials, our own Charlotte community experiencing grief from the local gun violence, the countries at war Israel, Palestine, Ukraine, and Russia. All of the unrest throughout our globe, we hold in prayer like the incredibly tender and unconditionally loving arms of a mother. And we see this love reaching each one to awaken, to comfort, and to fill each heart with the unconditional love of God as it is so often expressed through motherhood. In gratitude for all of these loving blessings we know that flow to us and through us and out into the world, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, and so it is. Amen. Now I'd like to open up um, open up the space to allow us to each say aloud the name of a person or situation that you want to hold in prayer. I open that space now. Please speak it. We know and affirm 
that each one of these names or situations that have been spoken aloud or held in our hearts have been heard and answered and spirit is working in and through them to bring about the best outcome. And so it is. I want to let you know that we have a prayer box. So if you have a prayer request that you would like to leave with us, that prayer box is outside on a table. Those prayers are picked up and they are sent out to our prayer team who will pray on those for four weeks. And once they're done, they send those to Silent Unity and they pray on the, these um, requests for over a month. So lots of prayer power. If you have a prayer request, don't hesitate to put it in the box. If you need to speak to someone, come and speak to uh, Reverend Jim or myself if you have any prayers you need to share with us. There is also Silent Unity, if you have not heard of them. Silent Unity is a 24-hour prayer service available to take your calls via a phone call, an app, or an email, and they will respond to your prayer requests. Now I'd like to call up Dr. Adrian and uh, who's doing Spanish? Shirley? Shirley. Hi everyone. Happy Mother's Day. Today's blessing, I honor and bless the world's mothers. Today, I offer a blessing of gratitude for the loving, nurturing spirit of mothers. I bless my mother and those who have shared a mother's love by supporting me throughout my life. I think of the many ways they have been present for me over the years with unconditional acceptance and love. Honro y bendigo a las madres del mundo. Hoy extiendo una bendición llena de gratitud por el espíritu amoroso y afectuoso de las madres. Bendigo a mi madre y a quienes han demostrado su amor materno apañadome a lo largo de mi camino. I envision all the mothers, grandmothers, caregivers throughout the world surrounded by love and light. For those in my life, I take time to express my appreciation with words, gifts, and time together. To mothers-to-be, I prayerfully affirm health and ever-deepening joy. To mothers no longer in the world, I hold them in loving prayer and hold thoughts of joy and gratitude. I bless their souls' ongoing journeys knowing bonds of love keep their memories alive. Her children rise up and call her happy. Proverbs 31, 28. Al re reflexionar sobre las numerosas formas en que han estado presentes a mi lado con aceptación y amor incondicional, Imagino a todas las madres, abuelas y cuidadoras alrededor del mundo, rodeadas de amor y luz. Les agradezco con palabras, gestos y compartiendo tiempo juntos. Afermo salud y gran alegría para las futuras madres. En mis oraciones amorosas, Atesoro pe pensamientos de alegría y gratitud para las madres que ya no están físicamente. Bendigo el viaje continuo de sus almas sabiendo que los lazos de amor permanecen. Sus hijos se levantan y la llam llaman dichosa. Pro pro Proverbios 31. My name is Reverend Jim Ernst, and so glad to see you here. And I just shout out to those folks at home as well. 
Since today is Mother's Day, I do want to dedicate this message to my mom, who has always, always loved me unconditionally. I also want a shout out to my Aunt Mary. She may be listening as well out there. Uh, my Aunt Mary um, taught me discipline and encouraged me into confidence. So I want to, like I said, shout out to her. And of course, my mother-in-law, Marge, who always shows me kindness. Those are the qualities that I see in our mothers, in our mother figures, and all those in our world. Today, we're going to talk about three things. We're going to talk about magnets and mirrors and mind action. Oh my, no, let's do that again. Magnets, mirrors, and mind action. I, I picked these three M words for a reason, because I have actually stories um, that my mom taught me these things before I even was a part of unity, of the unity movement. So these are examples, these are stories. Um, we're going to hear three stories of my mom. You're going to get to know my mom a little bit better. And, uh, and when we go out there, we'll all, we'll all call my mom together, and we'll, ha we'll, we'll do a happy Mother's Day together. Let's talk about magnets. Let's talk about the idea of magnets within our lives. And I have, I have this. Unity has five basic principles. We got together yesterday and we talked about those five basic principles, those five ideas that we center our, our teachings around. Our second unity principle, that basic principle, our essences of God. They are inherently good. We were created in the image and likeness of God. We believe that God is an omnipresent goodness within our lives and that we were created in that same image. So in other words, we are good as well. Our essence is of God. We are inherently good. Our own path to awakening includes this realization of our divinity. Reading between the lines, not only are we good, but we are also divine. We are divine such as that divine spirit that we talk about within our lives. And I would say that this sets us apart from some other of the Christian denominations out there that we are divine by nature. Rather than being flawed, being stumbling through this world, we are, in essence, creations of that divine spirit. Ultimately good. Ultimately good. When things are going well, our state of consciousness is expanded. That's how we prove that we've remembered our divinity, is through that expanded consciousness. So that's when we radiate that energy and that frequency of who we are. That's when we shine as humans. But at the same token, we also have free agency. We don't always shine to our fullest capabilities. But on Mother's Day, I do want to talk about those divine attributes that show up in our lives. This is during that time of expanded consciousness within our lives. That unconditional love, that compassion, that empathy, and that encouragement that we see from mothers around the world to those people in their care. All of us, I would say, want to exude those qualities. All of us want to model those attributes as well to those around us in our world. So why are we talking about the idea of magnet at this time? Well, it's because from time to time I do hear from other folks that will come to me and they will ask me, you know, I want more fill in the blank within my life. And we all probably have that ideal 
I want more, and think about it yourself, I want more something in my life. And the question is, how do I get that? I want more love in my life. Reverend Jim, tell me how to do that. What's the secret to that? How do I get more of that? This is where it is. It's like a magnet. What you put out into the universe, you attract as well. What you put out into the universe, you attract as well. If you want love in your life, appreciate others. If you want to experience compassion, be kind to somebody else. If you want to know empathy, care deeply for something else. And if you want to feel encouragement in your own life, support somebody else. Reach out and support somebody else. That's the magnet. What we show shows up in our lives. That's the energy of this world that we live in. It's not a big mystery. What we put out, we attract back as well. This energy has an attractive force. So here's the story for learning a little bit about how my mom taught me this, this lesson before I even knew about unity, before I even knew about this. Because I grew up in a different faith tradition as a child. My mom over the years held many different jobs. She was a confectioner, which means she worked creating candy. Does anybody know of C's candy out on the West Coast? C's, well, even on the East Coast, they probably moved to the East Coast these way. But we would visit people in, in the Midwest and say, and they would say, next time you come out here, you have to bring a box of C's candy with you. My mom worked for C's candy. We always had candy in our household. That, that was, people would come to, my, my friends would come to my house because they knew we had a, always had a plate of C's chocolate sitting out on the kitchen table. Always, we always did. My mom was, um, she was an Avon lady. Do you remember Avon ladies? What, what did they tell us about Avon? What was the, what was the marketing for a Avon ladies? Remember? Avon calling. Avon calling. Or sometimes it was ding dong Avon, right? Ding dong Avon. And it, maybe this isn't politically correct. I don't know. But um, my, my younger brother, who was his favorite joke, because he knew my mom was an Avon lady. Uh, and, and this is, so this is when he was very young. This is when he was in elementary school. He would say, what lays in the grass and goes ding dong? A wounded Avon lady. So, not politically correct, I know. But he just thought that that was hilarious. And he told it over and over again. My mom was a bus driver. She tried these, she, she had all these jobs. My mom as a bus driver was when I was in middle school. So, of course, I was mortified to take that bus. I rode my bike to school from then on. <laughs> the point is that when she was 18 years old, she got married. She, she lived in Utah at the time. She got married. Um, my, my mom and dad moved to L.A. She told me that she did not feel, she had no friends at the time in L.A. She, she did not feel brave at the time. And that she recognized that that was one of the qualities that she wanted to develop within her life. She wanted to feel more brave as well. So she told herself to be brave. She started making friends. Actually, when they first moved out, my, my dad was in the, um, in the Marine Corps. So she started, making, um, she started making friends with the other women who was, had new families. I was a baby in the, in the Marine Corps. Not that I was in the Marine Corps, but you know, I was a baby. So all these younger families would come together and she would, she was like the, she would, she would pep talk these other women into being brave. You want this? Yeah, let's, I'll help you. Let's do this thing together. 
She was exuding that bravery that she wanted in her own life. She started this group as almost like a fearless women's group. And I acknowledge that with her. That, that is a huge step. She encouraged her new friends in bravery. And now that I think back on it, my mom is one of the bravest people I know. But she had to embrace that not only in herself, but in others as well. My mom is the bravest person that I think I know. Let's talk about that mirror. So we talked about, we talked about that magnet. What about the mirror? Life is a mirror. What you see out there, you must first see inside yourself. Do you know who Wally Amos is? Famous, what is famous Amos famous for? Cookies. Cookies. <laughs> famous Amos is an entrepreneur. He is an author. He is a lecturer. He is a motivator. But he tells us that those things that show up in our lives are like a mirror that we can learn from. We must first see these things within our lives. It's not, the, the things that show up in our lives to challenge us are for us to grow from, is what Wally Amos would talk about. Let me tell you about that story for my mom. And let me start out by saying when I was younger, when I was in elementary school, I was pretty, a uh, pretty shy kid, and I enjoyed reading books. Rather than dealing with people, I enjoyed retreating into my room and reading a book. That's how I dealt with the world, right? And I was, let's just say I was very shy. I would rather read a book and do a 10-page book report than to talk to a girl, right? I mean, I was just, that, that was me as, as a kid. I, I just loved to read, and, and I recognized that that was really kind of retreating for me. During elementary school, I had a best friend named Donald. Donald and I were inseparable on the playground, but I came home to my mom one day and I said, Donald is driving me crazy. Donald is driving me crazy. And I said that over and over again, and, and, she, and she sat me down. She wanted me to tell, tell, tell me the story of why Donald is driving you crazy. And I told her that during, during uh, playground time, there was a kickball game going on. And one of the kickball rules was that if the kickball game was going on, you had to have two people to join. Anybody could play, and, and they would let anybody play this game. But you had two people to make it even, right? You always had to have two people. So you had to present yourself to the kickball game and ask, hey, can we play as well? And one would go to one team, one would go to the other team. Donald really wanted to play kickball that day. I was a little re reluctant. I said, yes, okay, let's, let's go up and let's play. And he says, you ask. And I said, well, I'm not asking, you ask, right? <laughs> and we did that little game for a while. Each of us was saying, well, I'm not gonna ask. And we ended up not playing kickball because both of us were so shy that we, neither one of us would ask. So I went home and I said, Donald is driving me crazy. Donald is driving me crazy. And, and she sat down with me and she said, she said that sometimes we see others in ourselves. And there's a mirror in, the, in essence. When you look into that mirror, when Donald is in front of you and, and pretend Donald is that mirror, you see something that's driving you crazy. What is it? And she got me thinking, what is it? What was I feeling uncomfortable about? What was driving me crazy? It was my shyness. He was showing me the shyness in my life that I didn't like about myself. But for me, all I thought of at that time was he was driving me crazy. It wasn't him that was driving me crazy. So as an adult, we acknowledge that each one of us has stuff that we're working on, right? Sometimes we see it. Sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes we think of this stuff as baggage within our lives. This is the, this is the stuff that we've 
that we haven't resolved yet within our life. We have histories, we have perspective, we have stories that we've made up about our lives. We've got family dynamics that we're working on. We have got patterns in our lives. These are the things of humanity. We're just working on stuff as individuals. And we've got to admit that from time to time, that mirror shows up for us. When we feel something from the outside world, that's when we react to something. Not necessarily even the thing that showed up that we're reacting to, but what we will, that button that's being pushed for ourselves, possibly. What would happen if the next time that happened? And what would happen if the next time I said, in my story with Don, what, when something started to drive me crazy, he's driving me crazy, or this situation is driving me crazy, that thing is driving me crazy. Instead of running it through my head over and over again and blaming that external thing or ranting to my poor partner about what somebody said to me and then making up a story about what, that, what they meant by that thing. How do I know what they meant by that thing, right? Instead of doing that, what if I held up that imaginary mirror and asked myself, what is it about myself that I am reacting to? This is the mirror. You see that image of the mirror behind me. What is it about myself that I am reacting to? Because rarely, if at all, are we reacting about the other person. It's about ourselves. We're going to talk about mind to action. Mind to action is one of the phrases that we also know as uh, Unity's third basic principle. And all those who were here yesterday, Saturday morning, that talked about the basic principles will recognize this when we say that I create my experiences by what I choose to think, feel, and believe. What I think, feel, and believe. I create my experiences, but what I choose, again, to think, feel, and believe. It's also known as, the, the phrase that we also use within the unity movement is that thoughts held in mind create more thoughts of those kind. If we're continually running that loop within our mind about a certain thing, those thoughts over and over again, those thoughts will continue to manifest within our mind. We continue to think of whatever that thing is. And I can think of a hundred examples in my own life, that tape that runs in my life. Thoughts held in mind produce more thoughts after their kind. This is also known as mind action. So here's the story for my mom. Here's the lesson from my mom over the years. At a fairly early age, probably late, probably sixth grade or so, my mom and I started a, what I call, because none of my other friends were doing this, it was a, a fairly unique relationship in terms of this thing that we did. We got together at, a, at our kitchen table and we created what I now think of as kind of a comparative religion class or discussion group. It was more of a discussion group. Because what was happening is I would come back from Sunday school on a Sunday and I would have a long list of questions. You know, Mom, we talked about whatever it was, Noah and the Ark. And I just, I wasn't, at that time, I just had more questions than answers. My mom would say, well, come on, let's, let's sit down and let's talk about it. Let's... And it was never limited to that religion of my youth. It was always, I wonder what. And she allowed me to do that. I would say, God, I wonder what the, I wonder what the Catholics would say about that. I wonder what the Buddhists would do in this sense. I wonder what, I wonder, I wonder. And we would discuss it. And I just, I can't tell you how much that meant to me, that comparative, that, that those discussions I had with my mom. 
My mom made it okay for me to question the rules and the dogma that was presented to me. I was told at Sunday school what to believe. <laughs> and I was having none of that. <laughs> and she was okay with that. She was okay with that. One of these Sunday, Sunday school lessons came back and um, our Sunday school teacher taught us that God knew everything in my mind. And it scared me. It's like, oh, oh no, somebody knows what's going on in my mind. And so I, I came home with, or first of all, the Sunday school teacher was not able to answer the questions I had. And um, I think what happened was the Sunday school teacher would pull my mom aside and say, you know, Jimmy has a whole lot of questions I can't answer. So that, that's, that's when my mom said, okay, I'll talk to him, right? And that's when we started our kitchen table talks. We came home and instead what happened was we explored the idea, not that God knew everything that was going, and I should be fearful that I should be afraid but we explored the idea, and she said to me, and, and I can always remember this, what if it was simple? What if it was simply that you needed to be careful about what you thought about? Not that God's going to punish you, but what if you just needed to be careful about the things that you're thinking about every day? Wow, doesn't that kind of sound like new thought? Doesn't that sound like this third basic principle. My mom had no idea. But what if you needed to be careful about what you held in your head? Back then, I think we used the words of, and now that I think about it, we probably created an affirmation at that time. I needed to fill my head with good thoughts. And I was happy with that as a kid. Okay, I can do that. I can hold my head, or hold my mind with, filled with good thoughts. And so I did that. Today, I believe, I've progressed. Today, I believe that my mind and my thoughts hold a creative power within my life. That I choose affirming thoughts, words, and actions as a way of taking responsibility for my life and for what I experience. I believe I co-create with God in this world by the thoughts, words and actions that I hold within me. I hope you've enjoyed learning about my mom and I a little bit and our relationship a little bit more here today. Now that we talked about magnets, we talked about mirrors, we talked about mind action. Know that I love you, I bless you, I appreciate each and every one of you. And I behold the divine in you. Namaste. Let's move into meditation at this time. I invite you to move around, to get comfortable. Maybe you can place your feet flat on the ground if that's comfortable, to ground yourself in that energy of the world. There we go. Close your eyes if that feels right. If you don't close your eyes, maybe you can stare at that candle on the screen or unfocus your eyes out in front and just be aware of your breath for a moment or two. Be aware of that in-breath and where you feel it and beware of that exhale. And again, where you feel it in your body. Is it in your belly, your chest, your nose? Notice that breath. Start to feel that cycle. Allow yourself to settle in as your muscles relax, your mind relaxes, as you focus on my on my words for a while and then we move into silence.
but we think about on this mother's on this mother's day those qualities that are natural for us that we believe in One of those is compassion. That each one of us in this room, on Zoom, or listening to this later on, was created with that attribute of compassion in their lives. Was created with love, unconditional love in their lives. knows and shares kindness as well. I focus on these spiritual qualities. My consciousness becomes one of anticipation. That, antici that anticipation that these qualities are always there and will show up when needed within my life. Compassion, love, kindness. As we take a moment to continue thinking about those qualities while we move into silence. As we begin to come out of this silence, just nice and easy, becoming aware once again of the room around us, we can open our eyes, maybe let out a sigh, stretch a little bit. Namaste. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Reverend Jim. Magnus, mirrors and mind action. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Something to take with me as I go through the day today. And uh, we're now at this time in our service when we have the uh, opportunity to offer to this community and bless all of the gifts. And we remember that as we give, we receive because love and everything that comes from it is in circulation and flow. So I invite you to take your offering in your hand. If it's an electronic one or comes later in the mail, just put your hands together and, and, and see that there, that gift there. And let's say our offertory blessing together. Joyously, I give this gift knowing divine presence blesses all that I am, all that I have. Oh. Oops. We bless it all. Thank you. Thank you, God. The light of God surrounds us. We are light. The love of God enfolds us. We are love. The power of God protects us. We are power. The presence of God watches over us. We are presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well.